All right, guys, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to use Mint.com, especially the trends section, to track your expenses and improve your personal finance health. So trick number one is how to avoid bad averages in lists of your monthly spending. So what I've done right now is I've gone to my trends tab, and I have it highlighted to show my spending over time, which I think is the most valuable tab on this trend page over the last 12 months so we can see my spending if we scroll down we see that my average sp expense has been five thousand thirty three dollars per month unfortunately what this does is it's not correctly since august is only halfway through it's averaging in a smaller unrealistic value for this month so what I need to do is I need to go to custom and make sure that I'm looking at 12 whole months. So I'm going to go from August 1st, 2015 to July 31st, 2016. Now you can see the bar graphs adjusted. Now we're really looking at 12 complete months. And you can see my average spending is actually $5,236. So if I didn't adjust this, I might mistakenly believe that my average monthly spending is lower than it really is. All right, the next tip is how to make stacked bar charts of your expenses. So what I want to look at is figure out how much I spend on food and dining every month. So here we look at a trend I see over the past 12 months, it looks like I've had a bit of an upward trend in my food and dining expenses. Now, I actually categorize all my expenses in three subcategories, groceries, fast food, and restaurants. Just by looking at this, I can't tell whether this trend is because I've been eating out at restaurants more, because I've been eating more fast food, or because I've been buying more expensive groceries. And I want to figure that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of those subcategories, groceries, and look at this trend. This one looks pretty flat. I'm going to take advantage of the export to CSV button here. This basically saves a file with all the data in it from this particular trend. Then I can open Excel that looks like this. I'm going to do the same thing for restaurants. Ah, here we can see that it looks like it's the upward trend comes from eating out more at restaurants. Save this one as restaurants. And copy the data from restaurants over into the same spreadsheet. Finally, I need to do the same thing for fast food. Export to CSV. Call this one fast food. Open this one. All right, so now we have in Microsoft Excel three columns for each of my three subcategories of food. Now I can simply insert an area chart, I guess they call it. Here we go. We can see that the orange area is definitely getting bigger over time. That's my expenses on restaurants. We can see how that contributes to the whole of my food expenses. So I actually use this export to CSV function a lot. It actually helps me overcome one issue that Mint's been having for me. You see on my net worth chart, net worth over time, it has this artifact here because Mint was not able to get data from my mortgage for three months. It looks like my net worth spikes way up for three months because it's not correctly subtracting my mortgage debt from my net worth. So if I want to, I can go down, export to CSV, use all the data in the assets and debts column, except for those three months where I manually add the correct amount of debt. That will give me a more accurate view of my net worth. Now, for some reason for me, Mint's investments tab has never worked for me. It's never given accurate 
performance data, some reason it doubles the value of one of my accounts, which is incorrect. So if I want to monitor my investments, I still use trends. I go to assets over time, but I filter for only my investment accounts. This shows the growth of my investments over time without getting muddled up by my savings and checkings accounts and things like that. Another great use of the spending tab is the ability to filter by tags. If I wanted to see how much I spent on service and parts on my car and my wife's car, if I just put in service and parts for the past 12 months, I see the total amount I spent on service and parts. But when I categorize my expenses, I tag them, I, I categorize them all as service and parts, but I also tag them whether it's for my Chevy Impala or my wife's Toyota Highlander. So by switching to spending by tag, filtering for only service and parts transactions, I can compare how much I've spent on my Impala in the past year and how much we've spent on my wife's Highlander in the past year. Mint's also really helpful for how my wife and I manage our joint finances. We combine all of our money, but we each have an allowance we call mad money of about $400 a month. Now, although all of our transactions go in Mint, Transactions that count against my allowance are tagged as Will's Mad Money. So we can see Will's Mad Money transactions over the past 12 months. I spent $353 of my allowance last month, $484 the month before. And we keep track of these numbers in a separate spreadsheet. But what you can also do is sort by category. So I can see what do I spend my Mad Money on. About half of it's on shopping, half of it on entertainment, and some on gifts and donations. You can also zoom in on these things. So shopping is almost all clothing, some electronics and software, and some books. We can also zoom in and you'll see, what's all this entertainment I'm spending my money on? Well, alcohol, entertainment, music. So nearly all of it is booze. Now, the spending by category is also really useful for troubleshooting issues or discrepancies in your mint. So if you go to spending over time and you see some spike, how the heck did I spend so much money in February? What I like to do is change it to spending by category, set a custom date time frame just consisting of February. So we're going to go February 1st, 2016 to February 28th. 2016. Nope, February was a leap year. February 29th, 2016. And we, uh, and we can try to figure out why was my expenses so high? Oh, there's a huge travel portion. This is where my wife and I paid for our trip to Europe. We can also highlight this and find the transactions. What you may find if you haven't been using Mint religiously and making sure everything's categorized correctly, you might find something in here that's incorrect. You might find that you transferred a thousand bucks from one bank account to another and it got miscategorized as an expense instead of a transfer. You'll see that here. You'll say, I've got a thousand bucks in in uncategorized or in some other category when it should have been a transfer. Now that's an important thing. Nothing that's labeled as any type of transfer is gonna show up anywhere in Mint's trends category. Transfer is always moving assets from one place to another. They are not expenses. So anything in the transfer categorization is a very special type of categorization that's not considered an expense.